So um, the next method, ladies and gentlemen, is as you guys can mention, when you guys are going and graphing this, nobody really likes graphing decimals, right? No, it's not really that fun. So sometimes slope intercept form is the preferred method to graph, especially if your x and y intercepts are the same, which you guys have a couple of those functions uh, or a couple of those equations in your, in your homework. However, there is another method we can use. And um, Tyler, or Jordan, could you take your backpack off your desk, please, and put that away? Thank you. So the other method kind of goes into the, ooh, that's a bad marker. Other method goes into the understanding of a line. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, a line is infinite, right? So when you're graphing your line, make sure you can contain arrows on this. Now every single line, all right, um, except for vertical and horizontal lines, is going to have an x and a y intercept, unless it's a vertical horizontal line. Every other line is eventually going to cross the x and the y axis. Harris, I don't think that's what you need to be doing right now. Exactly, thank you. So, ooh, a ball. Now, remember, ladies and gentlemen, the x and y axis, all they are are number lines. The x axis is a horizontal number line. The y axis is a vertical number line. Which numbers to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, are positive. Numbers to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, are negative. On the y axis, positive numbers are up top, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And going down, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, are negative. Everybody follows me with this, right? Yes, sir. OK. Now, here's what I want you guys to really understand. If there is a point that lies on the x-axis, let's say this point right here, I have not gone up or down at all, have I? No. So remember, this has an x and a y-coordinate, right? Well, the x-coordinate is 2. The y-coordinate is 0, right? So if a, lot, if a point lies on the x-axis, the y-value is equal to 0. Any point that lies on the x-axis is what we call the intercept. So the x-intercept, we know y equals 0. In the same regard, if a point lies on the y-axis, I haven't gone left or right. So the x-value is 0. Does everybody agree with me? So now I can say that for the y-intercept, x equals 0. It's very important for you guys to be able to have this distinction between the two. x-intercept, y equals 0. y-intercept, x equals 0. So rather than having to rewrite it in slope-intercept form, which I know some students still have problems with, and plus, even if you do put in slope-intercept form, you might have a fraction as a y-intercept, which is not fun to graph. So there is another way. The other way is to find the x-intercept by plugging 0 in for y. So I say 1 3rd x minus. 2 thirds times 0 equals 3. Then find the x-intercept by putting, or sorry, find the y-intercept by putting 0 in for x. 1 third times 0 minus 2 thirds y equals 3. What's nice about this, anytime you multiply by 0, you have 0. So I'm left with 1 third x equals 3. And here I'm left with negative, ah, that, ah I did my math wrong when I was doing this. That's going to be negative 2 thirds, negative 2 thirds um, y equals 3. So to solve here, all you can do is multiply by 3 over 1, the reciprocal, right? So I get x equals 9. So I go over to 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And I make a nice big dot, right? That's the x-intercept. Then I solve here. I multiply by the reciprocal. y equals not negative 9 um, set halves, which again is going to be negative 4.5. So I go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 4.5. But as you guys can see, rather than doing the slope, which is like up 1, which is in between going over 2, up 1, going over 2 again, you guys can see I have two points here. And I can easily connect them. So then all you're doing is just graphing, you know, plotting one point that's a decimal and just connecting. And it's pretty simple. OK? Make sense? Kind of? Yes? No? So for you guys have two steps. Um, 